Here's another interesting capacitor question. All right. So this capacitor question is not so technical, but there is a jump scare towards the end. So let's read the question first. A capacitor of capacitance 470 microfarad is connected to a battery 24 volt. Okay. Standard charging. A two-way switch S is initially positioned is initially at position X. So that means I charge the capacitor first. Capacitor is charged. P and Q are identical long straight wires. Interesting. Each of resistance 5.6 kilo ohm. Very high resistance for sure. These wires are placed near to and parallel to each other. Okay. Wire Q is connected to a voltmeter. Interesting. I wonder what the voltmeter is for. Hmm. But anyway, at T equal to zero, switch S is moved to position Y so that the capacitor is discharged. Great. Calculate the initial charge Q0 on the capacitor at T equal to zero. So the initial charge is when the capacitor is fully charged. Fully charged by this 24 volt battery. So we can just write Q0 is CV and uh, the capacitance was 470 microfarad. 470 micro 24. Okay, so that Times I've forgotten the microns. Zero point zero one one two eight. Sticking to two SF because all the values given are two SF. Part two, calculate the current in wire P at the time where T is equal to zero. Okay, let's think about this. When T is equal to zero, this one is connected here, right? Okay, this one is disconnected. Right? And the, at the point in time when I clock the switch, this capacitor is fully charged. So the capacitor must be already 24 volt, full level, before the electron is changed. Okay? And when you close the switch, the electron will begin to flow and get charged. But at the point when you close the switch, this is 24. So this capacitor behaves like a power supply. Because what is the purpose of a capacitor again? To store energy ma? in your phone, in your laptop, all those battery that you have is a capacitive battery. Period. Before you go to sleep, you charge your phone. Phone full already, you disconnect your phone, you turn on your beautiful bright LED screen to see pictures with your girlfriend and your boyfriend. Your bright LED screen becomes hot. It's like a resistor. So this capacitor that you charge full becomes a battery. This capacitor that we charge full now becomes like a power supply. Which means the potential difference across here to here at the start is still 24 volt. Teacher, you will go down later. I know you will go down later, but at T equals zero, it's 24 volt. So this means if I want to find current, I know I can use V equal to IR. Okay, V is IR, it's expected to teach students to know. No point asking whether it's in the syllabus or not. So 24 is equal to I naught, and the resistance is 5.6 kilo. 24 divided by 5.6 kilo. So that's a lot of the decimal point. I'm going to use EMG mode. 4.29 times 7.83. So 4.3 times 10 to the power of language. To avoid confusion, I also don't really show intermediate values unless it's needed. Okay, in case I need to use these two numbers again, I'm going to use this one. I don't want to round again. Calculate the time constant tau of the charging circuit. So hopefully you remember time constant is RC. 
Okay, so the discharge circuit. This is R. This is C. Well, just multiply only, actually. Yeah, just multiply only. Got this. 5.6 times 10 to the power of 3. 470 times 10 to the power of 96. Just remember if there's a prefix to input, prefix up. Right? So, 470 times 10 to the power of 96. Or 2.6 seconds. 2.63, 2.63 Nice. Wow, oh, sure. Very easy, yeah, uh, compared to the main two two one. Okay, anyway, next part. Scatter mm -hmm. can be a curve to show the value of the current in the wire P as a capacitor discharges. So obviously, you know, the equation is R is equal to I naught E negative T over R C. So if you want to be E negative T over E point six. But whenever there's an E to the power of negative, you know you've got to move on this one. But this is an asymptote, I'll make sure you don't touch her. Huh? Run very close, but you won't touch. Run very close, almost parallel, but don't touch. It needs to look like it's going to be parallel. Okay, so those are your two marks. Okay, so one mark is when you have a line with negative gradient, and the other mark is when uh, it is asymptote. T is an asymptote, T axis. Okay. One broken line like this also. Lah. Let's try to make it as smooth as you can. Smooth like butter. Two marks. Oh, here's the jump scare. Hmm. Explain, because remember we haven't, we need to talk about wire Q. The wire Q is here, chilling beside wire P. Hmm. What do they want? What do they want? Explain why there is an induced EMF. I see the word induced EMF. My brain went to Faraday. Lens. Okay. So why is there induced EMF across wire Q during the discharge of the capacitor? Okay. So to explain the presence of the induced EMF, we will need to talk about Faraday. Okay. So let's think about what, because this is not directional. Why there is Y EMF Faraday? Okay, what direction is this induced EMF lens? Right. So what does Faraday say? Well, our friend Faraday say that well, there is an induced EMF E if there is a change in flux proportional to the flux. If there is a change in flux. So is there a change in flux? Well, there's a change in current. Change in current, meaning there's a change in magnetic field, meaning there is a change in flux, meaning there is induced EMF. Oh, so the current is dropping? Means the magnetic field is dropping? Means the flux is dropping? Means that there's an induced EMF. Okay. So let's write all of that down. You can say that the current in the wire P sets up talk about the magnetic field first. Magnetic field around it. No need to talk about direction, that one is not the focus of the question. No need to write hand no just say. There's current in wire P, so there's a magnetic field around wire P. Okay, then you say that's the current in wire P. Look at the graph, the decay graph here, drop. So as the current in wire P changes, the magnetic field changes 
since wire cap is near, sure they say near, no, they say here, ma. near to and parallel to, near to wire P. Wire Q experiences a change in magnetic flux, causing induced EMF in wire Q. Ta-da! So first thing you explain, hello everybody, there is a magnetic field. Second mark is when you explain, well, the current is going to change, so the magnetic field is going to change. Third mark, you explain, well, Q is nearby, ma. so Q also have a change in flux, and from Faraday, there is an induced EMF. Okay, my same bracket. Based on my friend Faraday's law. Electromagnetic induction. Okay, part two, sketch a line to suggest the variation of the voltmeter PT. One mark. I do it. You don't panic, okay? If you do calculus, you will realize that I need to differentiate an exponential function. And an exponential function differentiator will give me the same shape of exponential function. So the further math people and the math people will just noink and but if I say, for example, you don't do maths, well, it's okay. It's okay not do maths, all right? I guess for the syllabus at this point. So let's think about the thing, cutting it up into section. Yeah, I cut into three sections now. This first section, the change in current and the change in magnetic field and the change in flux is very rapid. Right, drop very fast, ma. See here, drop very fast. Drop. Drops a lot. Because there's a lot of change in flux, so from here, the induced EMF also follow drop. Okay, we're gonna start with here. And then by the same remark, this section here, little change, almost no change, right? It's almost flat. The change in current almost zero. So from that logic, the change in flux also almost zero. And from that logic, the voltmeter induced EMF also almost zero. So this section will flat. So what we're looking for is a graph or something like this one. Here, drop a lot. And this side will plateau, like flatten. Then you just join the shape, just join the graph. In other words, you just copy paste the shape. It's the same shape. That's all. Okay, it's the same shape. Oh, the easiest one would be like, your induced EMF is negatively something about a negative, you just want the the voltmeter reading. So I assume that the voltmeter is connected appropriately to show positive reading only. So the flux first. So this means when you differentiate this, you get the other one. With some constants in front, but we're not bothered. Just with some constants in front. So the shape will, will still be the same. Because when you differentiate e to the negative x, it will keep the same shape. So generally speaking, if you do maths in physics and physics, they will help each other. But it's also okay to not do it. Learn to section out the graph and try to interpret based on the knowledge that you already have. Nice to have, but not needed. That's what I think about. 